So thank you everybody for joining our session uh, on distributed authority sorry, for client hosted multiplayer games. So my name is Lucie Julina. I'm the senior technical product manager for multiplayer and Dots Foundation in the Unity engine. And my name is Dominic Schreier. I'm a senior software developer here at Unity, and I've been working primarily on distributed authority. Thank you. In this session, I will focus on distributed authority, a feature that enabled the creation of robust and cost-effective client-hosted game using netcode for game object. Our agenda will focus on five key topics to help you understand how to develop distributed environment. We'll begin by discussing the concept of distributed authority and how to control a share uh, authority distributed among multiple clients. Next, we'll examine the network object ownership and how authority is shared among all the clients. Our third topic will cover scripting reference, where we'll present an example on how to integrate the multiplayer services with the netcode for game object. After that, we'll explore host migration, a standard feature will with a distributed authority that ensure session stability. Finally, we'll review the multiplayer backend, highlighting the scalability of the distributed authority service for online multiplayer games. We'll conclude with a Q&A session. So let's get started with our first topic, overview of distributed authority. So distributed authority is a new network topology that unlike traditional server client model, distribute the network responsibility across multiple clients. In this model, control and management of game objects are spread among all the clients rather than being centralized. By sharing the processing load, the system can handle larger simulation without overloading a single server, leading to improved game performance. This approach significantly simplifies the network architecture, eliminating the need for extensive server setup and configuration. Additionally, host migration is supported by default, enhancing the reliability of your network setup and ensuring the continuity of the game. Overall, distributed authority provide benefits like shared processing, um, load, simplified architecture, and greater reliability. So why distributed authority? Distributed authority gives developer control on how games objects are managed, letting you choose between client-side or server-side simulation. This flexibility is useful as your project grows, allowing you to adjust based on your needs and your budget. Moving computational workload to clients lowered hosting costs and makes it easier for developers with limited resources to add multiplayer features um, making high-quality experience more accessible. Distributed authority also improves how state chains are managed across the network, leading to a smoother player experience with fewer issues. Plus, it improves re resilience against client disconnection, ensuring consistent gameplay even with fluctuating network uh, conditions. Our multiplayer backend solution provides a, a scalable from the start, allowing developers to create and expand their multiplayer game while keeping the cost manageable. In summary, adopting distributed authority offer enhanced control, cost saving, better connectivity, and scalability. In a peer-to-peer -peer host model, we're gonna sorry, we're gonna look at the different network topology. In a peer-to-peer -peer host model, the first one on the left, uh, one client acts as the host and manages the game state for all the other peers. This model is simple because it doesn't require complex server infrastructure, but if the host client disconnect or has issue, it can disrupt the game, making the model less reliable. In a distributed authority model in the middle, the control is shared among multiple clients, so there's no single point of failure. This makes the setup simpler and more resi resilient as authority can shift between clients if one fails or disconnect keeping the game stable. In a dedicated server configuration on the right, a server manages all the game function and client interaction. While the setup can be complex and expensive, it provides high reliability and stability, making it less likely to have disruption compared to a peer-to-peer -peer model. 
How does this distributed authority work? The distributed authority server oversees all client connections, ensuring they are cor correctly established. It manages client authentication to allow only authorized users and control their actions based on their role and permissions. Additionally, it manages ownership of a network object and root messages between clients for effective communication. The disputed authority client established a direct connection to the server which stay active until either it's, it chooses to disconnect or it's disconnected from the service. During this connection, clients simulate and maintain authority over a specific portion of the game. So let's look at the demonstration from Dominic on objects that are distributed automatically between multiple clients. Thank you, Lucy. So yeah, this sounds great, but let's take a look a little bit deeper at what this looks like in practice. And this is a live demo on conference Wi-Fi, so wish me luck. Um, we're going to start up a couple of instances of our Asteroids sample here. Asteroids is a bite-sized sample that has been developed with distributed authority in mind and is running a distributed authority session. And you can see here that we have a couple of ships on screen. I can take any which one of them, fly around, and start interacting with the environment. And we're here up in a big asteroid field. I can fly around. I can shoot these asteroids to break them up into smaller pieces, as well as locate some mines, which should be around here somewhere. There's one floating around. And I can grab these with my ship and pass them around. Everything so far so good. This looks really like a traditional web server that you would normally expect, either peer-to-peer -peer or dedicated game server. Where we get a little bit into distributed authority is there's some special features in this demo for us to be able to start visualizing how this is working. So I'm just going to hit the O key and turn this on. And what you can see is now we've put colors on top of all of the objects. And these colors correspond to the same colors as the ship. So you'll see here that on the one screen, I have a red asteroid and a blue asteroid sitting next to me, and so on. What this means is that the client in blue is simulating the blue asteroid, or all of the blue pieces of the game. The client in green is simulating all of the green pieces. And the client in red is simulating all of the red pieces. So we are distributing the simulation amongst various clients, depending on how many we have connected and what's going on. So I'll go back to my presentation for a second. So this is cool. We have a simulation that's spread across different things. And this is achieved by a thing we call network object ownership. With ownership, every object or every network object has an authority of some kind. And what this means is if you are the authority of the network object, you can spawn or despawn objects. You can create new ones, get rid of them, do whatever you need to. You can parent, so you can change the parenting hierarchy within the game so that things are attached to other things as you'd normally expect. And you can change ownership. So the ownership model is flexible and can be controlled by whoever has authority over the specific objects. In a traditional um, network topology that we'd be expecting, this ownership or this authority is always in a single place. So a peer-to-peer -peer connection, you have a host that's hosting that peer-to-peer -peer connection. That host runs all of the simulation, has authority of all of the objects. And all the other clients have absolutely no authority and is sending everything through the host. Same thing is happening on a dedicated game server, where the server has authority, is running the simulation, and vice versa. Compare this to distributed authority, where that is now flexible. So you can define how this is going to happen, what that authority is, and what are the rules that are going to happen for your game. With this, we've allowed and impl uh, implemented controls that you can put into your game for how you want your authority model to be run. Uh, there's a couple of things that we can turn on. There's distributable, transferable, and request required. And you can turn these on based on the object for any single object in your game. Distributable is the first one. And what this one means is that you don't really care who has authority over it, and you're, relinqu and you're giving this control to the system. This is for things like the asteroids that we saw in the demo, where it doesn't matter who's running them. Just distribute them amongst all the clients and make sure that it gets run by somebody. That's what matters. Transferable is then taking a little bit more control over that and saying, I want to have some code control about who owns it. So a transferable object, which is owned by, say, client A, could be transferred to client B at any given point in the simulation 
so that we can have different control models and take advantage of that ownership, because there's some things that come along with it. And then for a little bit more of an advanced scenario, we have request required, which allows an, a client to request ownership, but that could be denied by the owner. So if client A and client B have a bunch of objects, client A will say, request ownership of client B, or of an object of client B, and client B has then the choice to say yes or no. And that makes sure that you can have a little bit more of a security model in your, in your ownership throughout your simulation. Now, all of these controls are, are configurable and can be stacked. So you can set them up in such a way that it's distributable and transferable. So you don't care who owns it, but you might want to change control at some point during the gameplay. Or you could say request required, or you could just turn it all off and just say, hey, no touching the ownership. I need it as is. And we enforce this in distributed authority. So all of these rules are enforced to make sure that all of the clients are playing nice and that the simulation runs smoothly as expected. With object distribution, the first option here, what it, we do is we try and keep everything a little bit load balanced amongst all of the clients. So you can see here that client A has all spawned objects in the game. So when you start off with a single client, all of the game is running on that client, and it's acting very much like a host like you would normally expect. When a new client connects, if there are distributable objects, they will get distributed amongst every client that is now joining the game, and it's going to take away some of the work that the clients would be doing otherwise. So when you have, say, half of the distribution, uh, half of the simulation distributed, only half of the bandwidth is being used on upload because the objects that are not being simulated on the client don't need to have their positions updated, as well as lower simulation cost because the client isn't running the update logic and the validation that goes with it when it's not owning those objects. And they're all still synchronized across all clients, making sure that no matter what's going on, everyone sees the same thing, interacts with the same thing, and you have the same clean updates that you would expect from a multiplayer game. With this, there's also some benefits to having ownership. The main one being that client-side spawning doesn't introduce any latency and gives you a much better experience to the players that are using something. Traditionally, let's say I had a game and I had a projectile. If I were spawning a projectile, I would have to make a request to the server saying, hey, I want to spawn a projectile. That request is not going to travel instantly, but there's going to be some delay. And it's going to go up to the server, and the server says, OK, cool. I will create you a projectile. And then it will send out a message to everyone else saying, hey, we're creating a projectile. Here it is. In reality, with that time delay, that projectile won't be in the right spot. You end up with a little bit of latency, a little bit of lag, and that causes visual desyncs in your game. When you have distributed authority and ownership, you can say, I want to create a projectile right here. And it shows up instantly right where you are. And everyone else then synchronizes across. So we can make sure that things that need to be synchronized visually are guaranteed to be exactly where you want them. And you don't have to do any fancy math or extra work to even that out across the different clients and the different players. With that, we've also introduced a new tool in distributed authority to help with the reverse problem, which is despawning. So you can create a projectile where you want it. It shows up visually. We've also introduced deferred despawning, which allows you to compensate for that additional network latency when despawning objects. So that way, when something gets despawned, it disappears instantly, but it might disappear a little bit later based on the network lag so that everything is visually synchronized across every single client in the scene. Now I'm going to go back to my demos, and I'll show you a little bit more about what this object transference and ownership rules looks like. So let me open up another. Let's do two clients to start. So you can see here, I have my, my usual ships. They're flying around. We have our asteroids here. And the asteroids are mostly red and green, and they're about 50-50 split across the system. Let's open up another client. You can see here that immediately when the new client connected, a lot of the asteroids, which were marked as distributable, have now been distributed to this third client. 
and there's about a third of the ownership across each part of the system. So we can see now that the simulation's been transferred, there's a little bit less load on every client, and we're still making sure that everything is balanced and synchronized. Then, if I'm spawning projectiles on the red client, those are being spawned, owned by the red client, and you end up with a situation so that it's always spawning at the correct location. And I can then go and start interacting with different things. So I can interact with green asteroids like I normally would, if I could aim them correctly. They will break apart, create new green asteroids. Same thing with blue, same thing with red. The only difference is that the simulation and the logic behind it is being run on the different clients depending on who owns it. So we can start to simulate how this is shared across. And we have these mines over here that I can pick up. And you'll see that when I'm picking them up with the red client, they immediately transfer from being owned by the green client to being owned by the red client. This makes sure that the red client can hold it, can move it around, and everything stays perfectly synchronized on it. And then I can let it go. And then let's take, say, this blue client, if I can catch it, to grab the red mine again. And now it's blue. So we're transferring ownership of the object, and we're transferring the simulation of the object as things move across, depending on gameplay needs or depending on the service's needs itself. Let's go back to our presentation slides here. So that makes a lot of sense. This is really cool. But I'm sure you're wondering, OK, what does this look like as a developer? Is this going to be hard to implement? Is this going to be a scary thing with lots of code, something like that? And so I figured we could walk through some of the scripting examples, what this looks like, and sort of talk a little bit about what you need to do as a developer and what you need to keep in mind. First of all, we've set out with Unity 6 to really simplify the getting started and configuration code needed for anything in multiplayer. So we've integrated with the um, multiplayer package. And you can see that we've got start starting a distributed authority connection down to a two-step process. First, you log in with your Unity Gaming Services um, anonymous login, player profiles, whatever you're looking for. Get that connected. And then you create a distributed authority session and create or join the session using the session ID. And that's all that's needed. Once this code has executed, you will have one or multiple clients all connected into the correct session. And everything will be authenticated and authorized as you would expect from a production game. In addition, we've simplified some of the code that is required for managing ownership and managing authority. So if you're used to writing older netcode for game objects code, you might probably are familiar with is server, is host, is client, stuff like that. We've now simplified it to a single concept that can apl be applied between dedicated game servers, peer-to-peer -peer connections, and distributed authority. So you can see on the top here, we're not checking of is server anymore. We're checking has authority. And you can also check is spawn, has authority. And this will apply differently, but correctly, depending on which topology you're using. It's used to de determine if you can spawn, change ownership, parent, like you'd expect. And it means similar things depending on your topology. So if you're in client server, the server always has authority. So that will always be the has authority side. And the client will never have authority, so it'll always be the doesn't have authority side. If you're on a peer-to-peer -peer system, very similar. If you're the host, you will have authority. And if you're not the host, you will not have authority. If you're a client, you will not have authority. But if you're in distributed authority, that will be dynamically updated based off of your ownership rules, your authority rules, and who's got authority at a given point in time. And it can allow us to switch between the clients as we need. Um, in addition, network variables, network transforms, some of the building blocks that you would be expecting from netcode from game objects are all automatically set up with the right permissions and the right checks to be following across the system. We lost. Sorry, I will speak loud or. <laughs> Small technical issue. <laughs> yes. Apologize for that. <laughs> A 
We're testing? OK, Yay. we're good. Thank you very much. Yes. Yeah, so as I was saying, network variables, network transforms, the building blocks that you would be expecting to use in a regular netcode for game object system are already set up and work with distributed authority. They do the correct checks, and you can just use them as you would expect with no additional modifications. Finally, the other case that we talked about earlier, which is spawning, has been greatly simplified for developers. So it used to be that if I wanted to spawn something, the correct way to do it would be I have to calculate where I should spawn it in the future based off of network latency, send that request out to the server, wait for that to get back, and hope that all my calculations were correct and that it will show up in the right space. With distributed authority, we've gotten rid of all of that. There's no server RPC to send. There's nothing like that. You can always spawn objects that you will have control over, and you just create them like you normally would with create game object, get network object, and spawn. So it simplifies your scripts, gives you better visual synchronization, and nobody really has an advantage because you can really craft your gameplay and craft the advantage based on what you need for spawning and synchronization. Now, that's all well and good, but one of the other traditional problems with a peer-to-peer -peer system is host migration. Let's say that we're running a game in a peer-to-peer -peer system, and it's on mobile, for example. And you have a host that's running, and suddenly the internet disconnects. Their power goes out, or their phone battery dies, or who knows what's going to happen. Typically, in these events, the entire session is going to die, and you're going to have to rebuild it, or you have to put a lot of effort into making sure that your session is resilient against host disconnects. In our case, we have host migration built into every single distributed authority session. And it makes sure that these disconnects will never affect your game. So if you have dedicated servers, these are designed to not disconnect, and that's why you tend to have them. And peer-to-peer -peer games, the host disconnect will end your session and is quite impactful for your game and would be why you would be making that decision between dedicated game servers and peer-to-peer. -peer. In distributed authority, you have a session owner instead of a host. And the session owner is kind of host-like. It has some privileges in terms of scene management, things that you would need a sort of more important role. But that important role can move. So you can. When there's a disconnect, it doesn't stutter, it doesn't jump, but we can move the host to another client. And there's no real risk to having anyone disconnect at any given point. The only major thing that can happen is if you have a hard disconnect, which is where, say, that someone's network dies or their app crashes. We have to determine when that is, and there will be a short delay on objects owned by that client. But it recovers itself and can continue on running your game without having to really worry about the whole thing going down. It's a little bit of a stutter for the developers. If you can disconnect cleanly, it's seamless. If it's a little bit, if it's not uh, a clean delay, there will be or a clean disconnect. There's a small delay, but it's very recoverable and still and still a lot safer than having the other models. With that, there's a couple of things that you need to keep in mind as a developer. So. It used to be that you could just keep all of the state in the host when you're building your game, and that would be enough. With distributed authority, you need to put more data on the network so that we can recover it and it's not lost in the event of a disconnect. And with this, we use network variables. They are crucial to object distribution and session owner promotion, and it's something that you need to keep in mind when you're developing a distributed authority title. They just allow us to transfer the state across the different clients and make sure that nothing is lost. With the new versions of Netcode for, for Game Objects, we understand that network variables haven't always been the best API for developers. So we've upgraded them and made them a lot more powerful to take advantage and to allow you to take advantage of or to solve this requirement and make sure that your games work correctly. We've added additional variable types, collections, dictionaries, lists, stuff like that, just work out of the box with network variables now, as well as some more um, specific optimizations to reduce bandwidth and to make sure that we don't take up any of your precious data when nothing needs to be synchronized. So it's very safe to use as many network variables as you want within a distributed authority title. 
Now with this, I think it's great to watch this one and see what happens and how we do host migration in uh, distributed authority. So I'm going to open up two clients here. This is all the same demo, same asteroid sample. And we can have them flying around. And we can see the ownership overlay as we would expect. And I'm going to open up a third client as well. Now, we know that one of these clients, client one here, is the first to have spawned in and is likely the session owner of the system. If, in a traditional peer-to-peer -peer or dedicated game server scenario, this client goes down, we would expect all clients to stop connecting and for the session to be over. So let's go close this app. And you can see that automatically the distributed authority session has rebalanced the objects, cleanly migrated the session ownership to another one of the players, and we continue on as normal. And we can do this as many times as we like throughout the session. So I'll just open up another client here. We have client two here. And let's kill off client two. Boom. We're back over. We have two clients. It's red and blue now. Things are continuing on. The simulation is still working. And there's been no impact to that. But let's get a little bit more destructive. Let's open up another one. So far, you've just seen me hitting the X button, which is a nice, clean disconnect. But why don't I go kill one of these in Task Manager, or Activity Monitor. Sorry, I'm on a Mac. So we can force quit one of these apps. And you'll see that the other apps are still running, but some of the objects have stopped moving. The green objects are standing still as the server is figuring out that one of the clients has been killed. But as soon as it does, it redistributes like we'd expect. We're back to red and, red and blue, and everything continues on. So we're safe and resilient against uncontrolled crashes and controlled disconnects, depending on what we want. And this host migration system makes sure that the app continues to run, stays running, and is a really good experience for your users. Now with this, we know that we need something to power it, and that there's some tools and services that are going into making sure that distributed authority runs smoothly and gives you everything that you need for development and production. So with that, I'd like to talk a little bit about the multiplayer backend that we use to power distributed authority. First, we know that it's one thing to build your games locally, but when you want to go live, global availability and being where your users are matters. Latency is a real thing. If all of your servers are in the middle of the United States and your users are in Europe, it's not going to be a good time for everyone. So with the multiplayer backend and distributed authority, we automatically scale up and offer co-located servers in five regions. So Asia, Australia, Europe, North America, and South America. Where your users are, there will be servers, and their distributed authority sessions will be as efficient as possible. We automatically use QoS to determine the best region, to locate your players, and to make sure that your game sessions are where they need to be. And we scale up automatically to meet your needs. There's no worrying about fleets, configurations, scaling settings, limits, stuff like that. It's all handled for you by the service, by the topology, and will be just part of your game that you don't even realize. Same. We know that authentication, authorization, security, it matters. Cheaters, you don't want them. You don't want people in your game that are not supposed to be there. So we make sure that we handle this out of the box, guaranteed for all of the service. Authentication is handled by Unity Gaming Services. So you have to, you come in, you're authenticated against all of our suite of tools. And this is a totally pluggable authentication scheme. So you can use anonymous login for development. You can use first party logins when you're going off onto app stores or other things, as well as it's a additional, it's a pluggable. So you can bring your own authorization authentication systems, plug them in, extend them, and we'll make sure that your users are authenticated against it. The authorization as well is performed against the lobby. So we guarantee that when you have a group of players, only the ones who are allowed to be there can connect to that server and you, we will kick any players who don't match that requirements. So you can leave that automatically based on your game, or as well, it's pluggable and controllable so that if you have services that have more requirements, you can apply those to the lobbies. 
And like I said, yeah, custom authentication and authorization flows. Everything's pluggable. You can build the security requirements off of the base that we offer to really make sure that your users are safe and that your game works like you need. Finally, we have a little bit of a performance boost as well that we're able to achieve using these, um, the multiplayer service for distributed authority. And this is really visible if we think about it in terms of dedicated servers, peer-to-peer, um, -peer, and then distributed authority itself. Dedicated servers are the gold standard. It's the fastest game servers. They're the most secure. This is what we want to hit, but they're expensive. There's a reason people don't necessarily want to have them. In terms of latency, round trip time, or RTT, a dedicated server has the slowest R or the fastest RTT or the lowest latency. Half of RTT goes to the server, half of the RTT goes back, and you don't have to worry about having too much lag in your, in your network. In the same way, your servers are probably on very fast internet connections on good, strong networks in the cloud. So you don't have to worry about the quality of those networks at the same time. Peer-to-peer -peer typically is done via a relay service, and you end up with a much longer RTT over a potentially weaker network because you have to go through to the other client. So you have to, to communicate to the host and back, it's always one full round trip. And from a host to a client as well, it's one full round trip. Now, where we have an advantage with distributed authority is this multiplayer service lets us be a little bit like a dedicated server. So if you're talking to the service, and many operations do, you only have to pay the same half an RTT as you would with a dedicated server. Same thing when you're talking client to service or service to client. And it's only in the cases where you're talking to client to client that you have one, R one full RTT. So it's much rarer that you pay the full expense of a peer-to-peer -peer hosted network. And finally, I know we're all excited about this, and I wanted to show you some of the resources that are available getting started today with distributed authority. So I will open this up. First of all, if you wanted to get started right now, we have samples and guides available that are on the multiplayer documentation with full setup guides on what you need to get started, how to integrate distributed authority in your game, and what are all the setup procedures, detailed instructions, all the stuff that I talked about today. In addition, we have the new package for Netcode for Game Objects. Uh, this has been available. You can put this into your projects right now and start playing around with it. Has all the features that I've been demoing and is what we've been using to build these demos. And finally, we have the asteroid sample that I've been showing off today. So all of the samples that I've been using, just showing host migration, object ownership, stuff like that, is available in our bite-sized samples repo for you to download, play around with, modify to your heart's content, and is available here. And in fact, it has more than what I was showing you. So it has the asteroid sample. It also has a sample for parenting with more information and a deeper dive into how that controlling works. Same with ownership. Same with deferred despawning to, for visual synchronization. Scene loading, all the things that you would expect for making sure that your game is going to work correctly. And even a stress test where you can play around with a bunch of stuff and just see how the whole system works and behaves under load. Finally, as a little treat, I have an upcoming sample that I would like to show to you guys that is also going to be distributed authority based. So I'm just going to open up my Unity editor here, and I will open up a couple of the tools that have been talked about during the keynote and around the sessions. Um, Unity 6, obviously. Also, the um, multiplayer play mode, multiple windows for testing out your environment. And let's open up, a, uh, let's open up this uh, sample. So we've got our samples loaded, and I will make a Unite session. And this is our social hub demo. So think of it as when like a loading screen or a, a game where you're just going to come in and be preparing for the next game or the next piece. And it's a social hub that everyone can come around and interact in. So we have a couple of clients here, and let me just find them across the system. There's our other guy. So we have our two clients. They're synchronizing, as you'd expect, across the same screen. And there's a little box that we can pick up, move around, drop. Same thing on the other side. I can have the little 
can pick up, move around, drop. Now, if I go into my scene view, in the scene inspector that we have at Unity, there is the ownership view of, um, with some of our network debugging tools overlays. Now, if I can just move down here, we can see that the ownership is displayed on top of the characters. So we don't have the fancy in-game UI that we expected from the Asteroids demo, but you can see all of this information within the Unity editor for your debugging and visualization purposes. Now, if I have my character, I'm going to go pick up this box. And you can see that the ownership has transferred. So we've transferred the ownership, moved it to the other client. It's being simulated by the one on the left here. I can drop that back down, move over here, take over, pick it up. And you'll see we've transferred ownership back. And it's all the same experience that you're expecting from distributed authority in the new upcoming sample that we are developing. And I will hand things over to Lucy. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Dominic, for the great demos. I think it's very convincing. It's working. <laughs> so it is available uh, as a preview now and will be released by the GA. Uh, this QR card code sorry, will actually link you to the GitHub of the asteroid sample that uh, Dominic presented to today. We're also developing uh, the other sample, like the Git, uh, social app sample that uh, Dominic demonstrated also. Uh, which will be available shortly uh, to help you to onboard with distributed authority. Plus, our backend access uh, for distributed authority is now publicly available also, so you can integrate it uh, directly into your project. If you have any questions, feel free to start now. Uh, the floor is open. Thank you.